great. Here's the last complication. Sometimes we need to add variable expressions to both sides in order to simplify. Let's look at a couple of examples of that, and then we will be great at solving linear equations. In this first equation, we're going to solve 3 times the quantity x minus 4 equals 5x. Let's start by doing the distribution on this one so that we can kind of get a sense for what's really there. So 3 times the quantity x minus 4, we'll do 3 times x, which is 3x, and 3 times minus 4, which is negative 12. So we have 3x minus 12 equals 5x. All right. Now, we're being asked to solve this, so we're trying to isolate the x, but notice that we have x on both sides. We have a 3x on the left and a 5x on the right. I can subtract 3x from both sides, or I could subtract 5x from both sides, but one is going to be a little faster than the other, and that's if we do it so that the x is on a side by itself. So what I'm going to do is subtract 3x from both sides. So I'm going to do 3x minus 12 minus 3x, and 5x minus 3x. So again, I'm doing the same thing to both sides. I'm subtracting 3x from both sides. On the left, 3x minus 3x makes 0, so that's gone, and I have negative 12 left. Negative 12 equals 2x. Now all I need to do to isolate the x is divide by the 2. So I'm going to do negative 12 over 2 equals 2x over 2. And that's going to leave me with negative 6 equals x. Great, got a solution. In the next equation, we're going to solve for y. So we've got more than one variable here. The equation is y minus 3x equals negative 2x plus 1. Now I'm solving for y. Again, I find it super helpful, especially when you're starting out, to highlight the variable you're solving for so that you don't accidentally get into trouble trying to solve for something else. So if all I need to do is isolate the y. I can add 3x to both sides to do that. So I'm going to rewrite this line, y minus 3x plus 3x equals negative 2x plus 1 plus 3x. On the left side of the equation, we now have y isolated. And on the right side of the equation, we have negative 2x plus 1 plus 3x. So negative 2x plus 3x, those are like terms, and that makes 1x, or just x and then we still have the plus 1. So all I did there was combine negative 2x and 3x to get x. So we've got y equals x plus 1, and we've solved for y. So that one actually simplified really quickly. In the last problem, we're going to solve for t. And we only have t's in this problem, so there is only one variable. We have 0.5 times the quantity t plus 2 equals 2t. All right, I'm going to distribute this one to get a sense of what's there. So I'm going to do 0.5 times t, which is, of course, 0.5t, and then 0.5 times 2, which gives us 1. So now I have 0.5t plus 1 equals 2t. All right, so I'm solving for t, and I've got a 0.5t on the left and a 2t on the right. You can see this is somewhat similar to the first one we did where we combined like terms. So go back and re-watch or re-listen to that one if you need to. I'm going to subtract 0.5t from both sides. That'll move all the t terms to the right, but they will be by themselves. So let's do 0.5t plus 1 minus 0.5t equals 2t minus 0.5t. And I'm going to, again, highlight the part I did to both sides, the negative 0.5t on both sides. So you can see it's all, it's all cool. And on the left, we're just going to have 1, because we got rid of the 0.5t's. And 2t minus half a t would be 1 and a half t's, or 1.5t's. OK, so finally, the last thing we need to do, we've got 1.5t on the right. We want to isolate the t, so we've got to divide by 1.5. Or if you want to use that other trick we did, you could just multiply both sides by 2, and that's going to work just fine as well. I'm going to divide both sides by 1.5. So I'm going to divide 1 by 1.5 on the left, and 1.5t divided by 1.5 on the right. 
that gives me 1 over 1 1.5, which is 0.6 repeating, 0.67 if you want to estimate it. But you should know that 0.6 repeating, but you should really know that 0.6 repeating is really just the fraction 2 thirds. So what we really have on the left hand side there is 2 thirds and on the right hand side t. So t equals 2 thirds. All right, let's recap. We learned a lot in this lesson. So going back up to the very beginning, we first learned that there are one variable linear equations and two variable linear equations. In two variable linear equations, somebody has to tell you what you're solving for, or you have to know what you're solving for. We know we can do a variety of operations to both sides of the equal sign as long as we do it to both sides of the equal sign. So we practice with that. You can make a wrong choice and do it to both sides of the equal sign. Nothing disastrous will happen as long as you do your math correctly. We practiced solving for y in a two variable equation. We practiced solving two step equations. We practiced solving equations that involve distribution. And finally, we practiced solving equations that involved adding like terms. So those are all the types of things that you'll likely encounter as you solve linear equations.